David is in Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, David. How can we help? Hi. Uh, thank you for taking my call. Um, I am working, I'm third generation family business. Um, we've got about 35 employees or so, uh, oil and gas related. We did 30 ish million last year. Um, but what I'm struggling with is about five years ago or so when I started, uh, we got into a lot of debt, uh, about 12 ish million dollars worth. Um, and it's just, I'm struggling really bad with burnout. It's been five years of fighting and this is all, all I know. And it's really beating me up. So, <laughs> um, uh, if you have any words of wisdom or advice or anything like that, so. Hmm. I'm sorry. That's harsh. Y'all got a great top line. Is your bottom line not good? Um, it's, it's so, so, um, a lot of the frustrations is our limitations with everything that's going back to pay back, uh, the debts that we're in. It's, we're having to operate like a $30 million a year company with toothpicks <laughs> every week. It's every, every day. You so, know, so you're just, struggle. just clearing the debt, but how much debt have you clear? Are you clearing in a year? Uh, about 1.5. So this, so this 30 million doesn't have a lot of margin then. Not nearly enough. <laughs> I mean, you only not got 30 nearly. employees. It's not going to payroll. What's it going to? Um, it's, it's a lot of junk. And that's what, unfortunately I'm not involved enough in my opinion, in the numbers and stuff. I do mostly operations. It's just what I see. Um, for so if you're doing, not involved in the numbers, how are you carrying the stress for the numbers? Just because I'm the only person that my dad talks to about it. <laughs> so I get to hear about it. He, he hadn't, he's worked for free for five years now. It's just hard to watch. So, <sighs> Okay. Um, fatigue and burnout are manifest themselves exactly the same way in our bodies. Uh, burnout manifests itself differently in our emotions than fatigue. Fatigue is I've worked my butt off and I've been cutting grass all day long and I stand in the front yard and the front yard looks awesome. And the bushes are trimmed and my wife is happy and the neighbors in the HOA are thrilled, right? I'm tired, but I accomplished something that's visible. I got traction, and I'm tired, okay? Like when we do an Entree Leadership event that's three days long, I typically am in the saddle 16 hours a day. Uh, I'm, you know, doing a breakfast with people. Uh, we've got lunch meetings. I'm on stage. We've got a platinum event that night, you know, and I'm pretty much in the saddle 16 hours a day for three days. At the end of those events, and they're world-class events, and I'm really happy with the quality we put out. At the end of those events, I'm exhausted, and it feels awesome. <laughs> That's different than... I'm exhausted and I have no hope because there's no traction. Everything I touched turned to manure. That equates to burnout. But it's the exact same feeling. It, it, the only difference is the emotional side of it. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. So your burnout has to do with the fact that you don't feel like you're getting traction or your dad is getting traction. This doesn't feel like it has a positive future. It starts to not have hope on it. Am I wrong? I would say that's accurate. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's when we sit down with dad and say, okay, dad, this is driving me crazy because I'm watching you suffer and I can't tell why we're suffering. Because if I'm going to suffer, I want to get something for it. If I'm going to... If I'm going to go to the gym and work out, which I hate, I at least want to feel better and lose weight. 
I don't want to get on the scales and be up five pounds, right? If I'm right. going to suffer, I want to see some traction. So, Dad, we can't keep doing the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. That's the definition of insanity. I want to help you. I'm going to come alongside you, and you and I need to look at these numbers, and we need to figure out how we can make more progress faster because you do not have too many employees. You have a great revenue Gross revenue per employee is outstanding. I wish I had what you've got. I don't have anywhere near what you've got. Revenue per employee. So your payroll is not eating up your profit. I can tell that from that ratio. So I don't know where your profit's going, and you don't either. Yeah. Okay, so I want to know if I'm you. This is the answer to how you get some energy back. Because you can recover from fatigue pretty quickly and get back after it two days later if you're getting traction and there's hope and sunshine, if the light at the end of the tunnel is not an oncoming train. <laughs> you know, like, let me give you an example. Let's say you and your dad dug into the numbers and you said, okay, we sell this piece of equipment, we stop doing this service, we hone in, and I see $5 million there. That gets us out of debt in two and a half years. I'm willing to fight like a crazy man to be out of this and fight two and a half years, but I'm not willing to run this thing in perpetuation like a rat in a wheel and get no traction. But all of yeah, a sudden, your burnout would turn to, I'm tired, but it's worth it because we're going to kick this thing's butt. It's fourth quarter, yeah, and I'm going to make one more, more run down the, down the fourth quarter. I'm going to make one more run down the dadgum field, and I, even though I'm exhausted. Does that make any sense? Yes, sir. Yeah, I, I agree. And that, that's a lot of my frustration is not knowing, I think. Yeah, um, that's fair. Yeah. Not knowing will kill you. Yeah. Because <laughs> here's the thing about not knowing is what, what we're all drama queens. And when you don't know, your drama queen in your head makes it worse than it really is. If you'll just tell people the bad news, it's not near as bad as they thought it was in their head. By the time they dream up what they think it is, it's like 10 times worse than it really is. And so it's like, oh, God, I didn't know. You know, by the time you get to this unknown, it, it just blows up. So, yeah, you, you need to know what's going on or you're going to burn up and your dad's not going to have you as his right hand anymore. Because you're not going to the, – the guy that called me a few minutes ago is not going to be on this job six months from now if something doesn't change. You're going to hit a wall. You're not going to be able to do it, David. Your emotions are shot. Your gas tank's empty. I heard it in your throat. Am I wrong? No, sir. That's okay. But I think yeah, I think some tough. hope, some hope by looking at the numbers and some flexibility and changing some of the process to get the some extra traction, some hope from you and your dad locking arms will put some grease in the gears. And I, I got to tell you, man, I'll be talking to a completely different guy a week from now. That'll put gas in your tank because you, you, you're not afraid. You're not, you're not lacking in work ethic. You're not lacking in courage or the willingness to fight the dragon. You just can't see the son of a gun. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, that that's, yeah, that's pretty much it. It just, if, 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 I could do it for two years, you know, <laughs> if I knew that that's what we got to, like you're saying. Oh my God. If in two years you I were completely debt free and you put $5 million a year in your pocket after that, you dead gum right. You could do that. Unless yeah. you're brain damaged. Of course you can do that. <laughs> that's hope. That's mathematical hope. That's called success. You can do that. I can fight for that dragon. But two years and I'm still sitting right where I'm sitting? No, thank you. Who the crap wants that? Yeah, and a lot of it's just the riding the roller coaster up and down. And one day is great, and then we'll have three not so good ones. And it just, by the end of the week, you want to just lay in bed. Yeah. <laughs> You're tapped out, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, but again, if you have two bad days, but you've got a plan that's going to make me free in two years, I can fight through the two bad days. Right. 
but I don't have two bad days, followed by two bad days, followed by I think I got five more years of two bad days, and then I don't think we're going to be anywhere different than we are today. Oh, good God, no. Who wants to get out of bed? Nobody. That's the definition yeah, of how to be depressed. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, you're going <laughs> you nuts. Your brain, your brain starts spinning out on you. Yeah. I don't blame you, man. So, I and I think truthfully, here's the thing. One of the things we see with leadership in America today, especially in small business, but it's really everywhere in leadership, we see it with pastors a lot too. The biggest thing leaders struggle with is isolation and loneliness. They don't have anybody to talk to about this. And your dad is that too. He doesn't have anybody to talk to about this. He's afraid to talk to you about this because he does not want to burden you. He wants to man up and carry this. Yeah, your dad's old school. Your dad's old school. Is he 70? Uh, no, he's uh, 55. Okay. But he's old school. He He's not yeah. afraid to put on work gloves and turn a wrench. No, oh, absolutely not. No, he's still to this day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and so he, he's a tough guy. But they're also yeah. he's also by himself, dude. And you and him working together as a team would light him up and – and especially if you guys start getting some traction because you make some radical changes. I think I hear down inside of this, I can't tell on you because you don't know, but I, I see such a big high revenue number and such a pitiful debt pay down that there's something, two or three switches in here that could be flipped, and I think I hear a fairly quick turnaround if you two will make some radical decisions that might be emotionally painful to make, but I think there's there's no excuse for y'all not to be able to pay more on this debt. There's something weird going on in these numbers that I can't that I don't understand with what you're telling me. So, and you don't either because you don't know. But get alongside your dad. Isolation is not good. It does not lead to high quality leadership. Leaders need other people in their lives. Uh, that's one of the reasons in our Entree Leadership Elite, we put together groups of leaders uh, constantly in small groups. And we're, we, you know, we have get on calls with you, and you hold each other accountable, and you become lifelong friends. That's why we do that, because it's such a starved area of leadership. Isolation is one of the biggest problems we face uh, in, in, the, in the business world, but certainly in the small business world. Hey, man, you're a good guy. You got a good heart. That's why you care. And the reason and, and the fact that you care is what's leading to you having your tank so empty. But dude, you gotta get this tank filled back up and it's filled back up with hope. That's what fills it up. And the hope has to come from logical view of a light at the end of the tunnel that's not an oncoming train. 